Good afternoon, or perhaps it's morning where you are, some distance away, viewing these lectures on Sabbath rest. We've been talking about a way or a number of ways to spend your time with solitude, in solitude with God. And we come now to session nine, Sabbath, a time to remember. In these days that we have been together, there has been much sorrow around the world, much catastrophe. There have been disasters such as a hurricane and tsunami in the land of Japan. I'm sure you've heard about that. And then along with that sorrow in that part of the world, there have been fights in Egypt, breakouts against governments, Libya, Yemen, other places as well, unrest in the world. In my own country, in the southern states of Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, there have been tornadoes which have ravaged houses and communities, killed lives, great disaster. In any of these sad situations, there is great loss. Obviously, the loss of life, the death of a child, the death of a loved one, a parent, is very hard to accept. Great grief, grieving and remorse, mourning takes place. When the dust settles and communities are rebuilt, there will be that loss of a loved one, but there'll be longing for something else, a way to remember such loved ones that are gone, family pictures and photos that have been lost. And this is often the case. If we don't have the loved one with us, at least we hope we have pictures to remember them by. But in many cases, a disaster not only takes the loved one, but it takes and ruins the photos, either by water ruining the pictures, or a tornado may take them away totally. They may be soiled and damaged by a tsunami. Whatever the case may be, there's a longing for those pictures, those photo albums that you once had. I've just taken some old photos from my own household and one from Lois's family as well. Times of remembering, some of these people are with us still, others have passed on, one in particular, but you get the idea. But I want you to think about the Bible right now as a photo album that urges the family of God to remember his works, God's works in our life. As you read the Bible, think of it as a photo album with pictures, with the events. Perhaps you've read your favorite passages of scriptures many times and you go back to them and they're underlined. And you have memories of times with God from the Bible. You remember a certain passage and how at that point in time in your life and you remember the date, perhaps you wrote some notes about how he touched you, he moved you. Well, the Bible is like a picture album, not because it has stories, they are picturesque in every way, but because we have actions by God and memories of ourselves responding to God, which is very important. So think of the Bible during this session, Sabbath, a time to remember, as a photo album from God given to his family. And we find that the word remember is again and again mentioned in Scripture. We look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth and confirms His covenant, His agreement with you, which He swore to your forefathers as it is today. And then the individual Jonah in the belly of a great fish said, when my life was ebbing away, he was sure to die, so he thought. I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Here he was far away from the temple in Jerusalem, but he could definitely remember 
the Lord at this time, in a time of difficulty, in a time of changing his mind and repenting of his running from God. The Bible tells us again and again to remember. It's a common exhortation from the Lord. Remember him wherever you are. So we think of Sabbath, a solitude with God. It's a time to remember him. Throughout scriptures, we are exhorted to remember the Lord. Here are some others. First Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 12. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgment he pronounced. And then the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. Again, in the book of Luke, this time an angel speaks to those who arrive at the cave or the tomb of Jesus. He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Again and again, you can do a word search. You can look at that word remember and find it in most every book of the Bible. Here's one. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes said this. The sum total of my life, he says, is this exhortation. When you're young, remember clearly your creator who made you, the beauty that surrounds you, the path, the road on which he found you. Remember the Lord. Days will come when it'll be difficult in your older years if you live to be old. And you can remember those memories of God, your creator, will help you, will sustain you throughout all of life. The Lord God provided not only a photo album full of memories, but the time to review the photo album. So he gives you a book, the Bible, full of pictures, full of times when you've read the Bible, where your life matched the words of the authors of the Bible. And God said this, and you accepted it. And so a worn Bible, a torn, tattered Bible has many, many memories in it as you reviewed it. But think not only as the Bible, as a photo album, think that God was so kind, he said, here, sit down now, weekly, and review the album. And think of your life the same again and again, how he has spoken to you through his word. Review by yourself and with others, this photo album from God. So he gives us not only the book to review the memories of God and being with God, but he sets aside a time called Sabbath. Now remember what he's given. Sabbath is a time to remember. Nothing less, but a lot more. Sabbath, a time to remember, I want you to see that the word remember is connected with that word Sabbath. Now we've read again and again this passage, but it won't hurt to read it again. This time, see the word remember. We've looked at various facets of this passage in Exodus chapter 20. Now I want you to see how the word remember stands out and just what you are to remember. Lois, if you'll kindly read. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the, nor the alien within your gates. <clears throat> For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Remember the Sabbath. Why are we to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy in this instance? It brings us back to creation. This commandment found here in Exodus, the fourth commandment, emphasizes in this text, going back to the book of Genesis. Remember, Genesis 1, he created the world, the universe, and made man in his image. But in Genesis 2, he rested. 
So as God rested and reviewed and said again and again, it is good, it is very good, and he blessed the Sabbath day, the seventh day, the day after creating all. When he did that, he said, now, you set aside time to remember me as your creator. As I created and looked and saw that it was good, now you look upon my creation and see that it is good as well. So you take time to note the precious, wonderful things that God has made for you to enjoy, your own life included. Make this a time when you see pictures, but not only photos in a book, but go out in the wilderness and enjoy what I have made from the first day to the end of all creation. Enjoy it. Remember that I'm your creator, but also remember that I not only made these things, I rested from them. This becomes a time to set aside your work and to observe what God has done. And by setting aside your work, may you be taken up in some kind of fascination or even glory by what he's made. And I've had many experiences like that as I've walked in the woods or the wilderness and seen things that I didn't notice before because I was given that time to view what God had made. Remember your creator. Remember that he worked and then he rested. Well, then in Deuteronomy, we have the same commandment, but it's given in a little different way. We are to re remember something else that God has done. First of all, he's a creator, but now in Deuteronomy chapter 5, we find an emphasis that is a bit different. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe, observe the Sabbath day. Note with me that both accounts of the fourth commandment as it's found twice, Exodus and then Deuteronomy, begin with the command, remember. Bring to mind. Stop and ponder. First of all, according to Exodus, I am the creator, and I had power over creation, and I also showed my power to stop creating. But then in the book of Deuteronomy, remember I am the creator, and I delivered you from Egypt. Deliverance. I am a powerful God that can take you out of situations that are horrible, of captivities. Remember, I'm the one who has come to release you and free you. And captivity and deliverance has many, many forms. This is the one that the Hebrew people were apt to remember. And in fact, the Sabbath became a continual, a weekly commemoration, celebration over the victory and God's deliverance, his mighty hand to bring slaves out of a powerful land known as ancient Egypt. So the Sabbath is a weekly reminder of the two major themes in God's family photo album. A weekly time causing us to know what God has done. God knows that I am prone to forget if time is not set aside to recall and consider again and again that he made the universe and everything in it. If, he, if we don't take the time he gives us to note his wonderful creation and his power over it and his appreciation for rest, we will get away from the realm of man and what he's made and what he has renewed in his creation. But secondly, we will forget that he cares enough to rescue us when we go astray or we found our way into a difficult situation just as the Israelites found their way in a horrific situation, a horrible situation as slaves in Egypt. He gives us not only the photo album, but he gives us a time to review it. The Sabbath is a celebration of God's mighty acts of creation and his merciful acts of redemption. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Enjoy God's creation. Find a time 
Go for creation walks out there. And as I said before, if, if you can't do it because of weather, or maybe you're not well, something else has come your way, you might look at a textbook of photos. You might get online. You might uh, look at the wonders he has made. We have technology that helps us get outdoors and remember the facets of creation. View scenic photos if you can't go outside, if you aren't in a particularly beautiful place. Our son lives in a beautiful place called Montana, and I took this photo when I was with him some years ago. And I have this as a screensaver. You may have a screensaver that reminds you of the glory of God, some magnificent scene that you've either seen, taken a photo of, or you've taken from some, uh, some art somewhere. God delivers and redeems in many ways. Again, Deuteronomy talks about deliverance, redeeming, redemption. Celebrate God's deliverance. And there are many words that describe it. The exodus from Egypt. Deliverance from captivity. Deliverance from sin and the wrath of God himself. Deliverance. Salvation through Jesus Christ. We're to remember that as in our day and age, we can see the fuller deliverance from sin, unrighteousness, from Satan, because Christ has come and we have that perspective, that time in history to see it. Threats to our health and life. We can remember what he has done and what he has given us. Look into your deliverance, salvation. Reconciliation. Salvation means to take you out of a situation in which you're about to be destroyed. Reconciliation is another word pertaining to God's deliverance through Jesus Christ, where two are separated. We were separated from God, the Apostle Paul says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And he reconciled us to himself. And then it's the job of reconciling the world to God. But we were once distant, broken in relationship, and he re reconciled, and he, by his blood, made the difference. Expiation, whereby the wrath of God was satisfied by the death of Christ. The wrath of God was paid for. God demanded the price. The wrath of God needed to be appeased. And that indeed is what happened through Jesus Christ. He satisfied propitiation. The price was paid that we owed because of our sin, but we didn't pay it, Christ did for us. These many words about uh, deliverance and salvation, justification, we are not justified in Christ just as we ever, never sinned. And you can look at all these words and study the Bible and study the significance of your salvation beyond just simply saying, I have Jesus in my heart. I have been saved by God. What are all the facets of salvation? And so much more that we have been given. Even the angels long to look into these things, Peter said in his book, the first epistle of Peter. They long to see these things ages prior to Christ's coming. We ought to look into them as well and have a deeper appreciation for our salvation. So Sabbath becomes that time to look into creation, but also our salvation and all the nuances and all the things that took place. I have to tell you a story back in seminary many, many, many years ago. I was taking a class by H.D. MacDonald. He was a British professor known to be very difficult to get a passing grade. Well, you might get a passing grade, but 10% of the students were given a failing grade. And that was a, a frightful thing. And, and all he did is give one test. No papers, nothing else. It was a long class for a whole quarter, and we heard again about sin and salvation. That was the name of the class, sin and salvation. And so we studied these long, this long list of words about sin and all the kinds of sin and all the delightful flavors that trap us. And, and he went through half the class. For many weeks, we studied sin. Hopefully, none of us became sinners because of studying sin but we got away from it. But we knew then the mighty weight of forgiveness 
would have to take place. The bearing of our sins was something very heavy and complicated for the Son of God to take upon Himself. But then at the end of the class, or at least the second half, we looked at all these words that pertain to our salvation. And we looked at how they're different and how they're marvelous and all these biblical words. And I was afraid of failing the class or getting a poor grade in it. So I started studying three weeks before the final exam. And I studied and studied all these words. And I remember the day of the exam, early in the morning, that I got up and I was refreshing, polishing my notes, the, the final, you know, and, and I'd been so concerned and worried about it. But it was a glorious day, and I just got out of the library, walked around the campus, and I just praised, hallelujah, my salvation is such a wonderful thing. I don't care if I pass the test or not. I've got it. It's such a marvelous thing. I feel light as a feather. I, it's a wonderful thing that God has done. Marvelous. And, and that was the test. Praise God, I got to be in the thing. You know, that was, that was okay. I had a friend that almost failed. But the point is, I'll never forget that day when I understood in the technicalities of my salvation, what it was about. And so he's given us time to review his deliverance, a powerful, powerful thing. And we ought to go beyond. He's given us a time to know our salvation. Go beyond saying, I asked Jesus or I repented once upon a time. Do you understand what these words mean and how complicated our salvation is? It's simple as a child, enough for a child to receive. But a scholar can study the technical aspects of our salvation and what God had to provide for us. Amazing and wonderful. He's given, given us a photo album to then take time to understand it. Forget about yourself and enjoy God. This is what I say to ministers who speak to people all the time and have polished their means of talking to people and have studied the Word of God over and over again. What good news do you have to say to people if you don't enjoy God? What good news do I have to say to anybody if I haven't enjoyed God lately? Are you enjoying God? God has given you a time to enjoy Him. It's called the Sabbath. Time with Him. I've mentioned David Hansen before. Long wandering prayer is something that has been given to us through him. He believes that uh, walking in the wilderness, walking anywhere is a way to pray to God that fits many of us better than sitting in a chair and praying. Long wandering prayer is used the fact that our minds wander as an advantage to prayer rather than a disadvantage. In this kind of prayer, we recognize the wandering mind as a precious resource for complex and startling dialogue with God. My morning devotions are a matter of discipline. My long prayers are a matter of appetite. 